Welcome to the show. It's Nish with you this Thursday afternoon. Now then, Quadrilla's chief executive says he could restart fracking in Lancashire in just six months once any new regulations are met. The government today announced its commitment to relax the moratorium on the controversial shale gas extraction technique, which involves pumping high-pressure water and chemicals into rock deep underground to release natural gas. Now, there's been no fracking in the country since earth tremors at Quadrilla's Preston New Road site led the government to implement a ban in 2019. Quadrilla's chief executive, Francis Egan, admitted the move would not have an immediate effect on our heating bills. The decision to explore and hopefully produce shale gas is not uh, something that is going to impact household bills tomorrow. A uh, resource estimate for shale gas in the United Kingdom is that there are over 50 years' worth of supply, so it has the potential to... Uh, help us towards energy self-sufficiency and not be reliant at all on gas imports. So it can have a very major impact. Uh, One producing site uh, could generate hundreds of millions of pounds in local community benefits alone. Well, the Business and Energy Secretary Jacob Rees-Mogg was brought before the House of Commons today to answer urgent questions about the plan. And it's safe to say the news had not gone down well with fellow Conservative MPs here in Lancashire. The filed MP, Mark Menzies, challenged the view that those opposing fracking are Luddites. There's nothing Luddite about the people of Lancashire or of Fylde. And I just want to start by saying, Mr Speaker, how disappointed I am that Parliament was not informed about this before the media, that as a local member of Parliament I was not given the courtesy, despite having requested for two weeks contacting the Honourable Member to get information via his PPS. I've sent letters, I've sent WhatsApps, nothing back. So, Mr Speaker, can we be crystal clear on one thing? The Prime Minister of the Manchester Hustings, it's a matter for public record, you can find the clip, made it crystal clear, no ifs, no buts, no caveats, that fracking would only take place in the United Kingdom where there was local consent. Crystal clear. So if the Prime Minister is to remain a woman of her word, a woman that we can believe in, which I believe she is, can the Secretary of State outline how that local consent will be given and demonstrated in my constituency of fires. Meanwhile, Conservative Scott Benton, the MP for the neighbouring seat of Blackpool South, also voiced the concerns of local people regarding fracking in Lancashire. Mr Speaker, the Secretary of State will be aware of the strong objections which many of my constituents have to fracking. The Prime Minister has been quite clear in saying it will only take place if there is strong local support for it. However, this poses many questions. What is the local community and how do you define that? How do you ascertain whether or not it can command local support? And what incentives, if any, are going to be provided to local communities to have fracking imposed upon them? My constituents are understandably anxious about fracking returning to the Fowl Coast. And so when will they receive an answer to some of these questions? Well, the business secretary didn't offer any indication of how local consent would be measured or how much cash local people may be offered to get their support. But he did say that local people would have to agree to fracking in their area and may be offered financial incentives to get that support. Compensation and consent become two sides of the same coin, that people will be able to negotiate the level of compensation and it will be it will be a matter for the companies to try and ensure widespread consent by offering a compensation package that is attractive. That was the Business Secretary Jacob Rees-Mogg speaking in the House of Commons earlier. Well, listening to that was Nick Danby from Frack Free Lancashire, which is one of the groups opposed to fracking. And Nick joins me on the line. Nick, what were your impressions of what you've just heard? Uh, I was pretty horrified. Um, Obviously, we knew that that the government had already said that they were going to lift the uh, moratorium. Uh, But Liz Truss made it abundantly clear, uh, unambiguously, saying it would be subject to community consent. Now, getting some compensation is absolutely not the same as consent. So Jacob Rees' comment about it's two sides of the same coin, that's ridiculous. People are undoubtedly you know, going to suffer crises, especially this winter, about paying bills. And I'm sure they'll welcome any financial help they can get. But that's not the same as saying, yes, I approve of fracking. Absolutely not. There is no consent here and there never will be. 
So what do you make of this Truss's announcement, given that the UK undoubtedly does need more and cheaper energy, Nick? Well, again, this is a sort of a myth-busting exercise. Cheaper energy. Yes, we know that energy prices are very high. Fracking, the fact it's produced domestically, is entirely beside the point. The price is set at the international market. So the fact that it's produced domestically does not bring down the price. Um, you know, it's like saying I live next to a farm and therefore uh, I'll get milk cheaper. It doesn't work like that. And, and they know this. They know that it's a lie, frankly. Let me ask you then, Nick, if the, the Prime Minister says fracking could go ahead where there is local support, what yes. would persuade people to support the move then? Well, if it wasn't for the, for the matter of financial bribes, uh, nobody would support it. You know, let's bear in mind that as recently as 2019, the moratorium was brought in because, uh, the, 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 because of the seismic events caused by fracking. Uh, and these events carried on long after they stopped fracking. So, you know, people, have, people haven't got, um, have got pretty good memories going back three years. Yeah. We, the protesters, were completely vindicated. What happened is exactly what we said would happen. If Quadrilla restarts fracking then, how will frack-free Lancashire respond? Well, I mean, the stock answer I give to all these questions is that if they come back, we will come back. I mean, as you know, at the moment, we don't know which sites they're going to come back to uh, and indeed whether they're going to go and test drilling elsewhere. We just don't know. But if they come back to Preston New Road, we will certainly be there. And there will be far more people for the reasons I set out just now, that people who perhaps were a bit dubious about, about the protesters and thought they were a bunch of hippies and layabouts, perhaps, they now know that we are absolutely right, totally vindicated. And I'm sure I, I know for a fact that people are contacting me saying, I'll be there, we'll be supporting you. Have you had um, people contact you over these um, couple oh, of days? absolutely. Gosh, yes. We, I've had lots of people contacting me saying, you know, we're right behind you. OK, Nick, thank you very much for your time. That's Nick Danby from Frank Free Lancashire. BBC Radio.